they created enough chances to score a few goals, Chelsea, before they were actually put to the sword. And uh, Frank must be scratching his head. As I say, the team, the team are creating enough. They're, they're energetic enough, but they keep leaking goals. And i am just looked at the league table here. And with a three-goal swing, West Ham, if they win at the weekend, could finish above Chelsea. It's Gee, incredible. I didn't realise that. Yeah. Yeah. Good grief. I mean, the Chelsea situation is absolutely baffling, Simon. And now we realise, I mean, Todd Bowley, one of the owners, uh, I think is suggesting he's going to take more of a back seat and leave it to people this side of the pond to be uh, making all the day-to-day decisions at the football club. I think that's the right decision, isn't it? I think it's the right decision to avail yourself of as much information as you possibly can about a business you're going to run to make sure that when the next scenario of employing people that you are ultimately going to... Todd Bowley was never going to run the club on a day-to-day basis ad infinitum. He was always going to... If he hadn't got himself involved, there'd be a whole gang of people saying, well, why don't you get yourself involved with a business that you own? Why don't you understand the business? If he gets himself involved, then people are going to turn around and say, you're too busy. What he's done is he's done the atypical thing that most people will do when they own a football club is get right in amongst it for the first year, Realise that there's better ways of handling the running of a business. Yeah, learn but maybe your, not make yourself sporting director. Learn your well. Okay, right. Someone that acquires players. If we actually believe that Todd Bowley was running around telling Chelsea how they should play, how their academy should set up, what the technical construct of the football operation was going to be, then that's silly. What he was really doing was taking it upon himself to get neck deep in the players that they were signing and how much they were getting paid for. Yeah. Right? And yeah. we used the sporting director one to whack him with because ultimately the outcomes have been crap right now. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind that Chelsea have made a whole raft of mistakes this season. There's no doubt in Todd Bowley's mind that they would have made a whole raft of mistakes, and I don't think anything would have been done differently in terms of, after a year of, of availing himself of information, whether they'd have been successful or unsuccessful, Bowley would have stepped back and gone, right, I've got my, I've got my land, I've got my, my sea legs, I know where I am, right? So, OK, I'm now going to put the football people in place that I trust after a year of looking around this slightly disingenuous, uh, dysfunctional industry, and I now understand who, what, when and why. I've got this agent out of my ear. I've got this person out of my face. I've got rid of the understanding of what goes on inside football clubs when I'm told when I walk through the door, we don't do it that way, we do it this way. And I've now got a little bit of my bearings. So it was always going to manifest itself this way. The fact is, Chelsea have been a disaster this season on the Mm. pitch. And that is entirely, I believe, responsible to the players and the football manager. Yes, 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 they had too many players in the dressing room. Often we hear they haven't got enough. Now they've got too many. Yeah, yeah. You, you still need effective management to produce better outcomes than 12. This team have been poor. and that, But that, how much blame does the ownership have to take here? Well, it has to take a proportion of it. It doesn't take all of it. Of course not. No, I, I realise not all of it. Well, no, but you, if you're... If you're but as if we speak this morning, Chelsea are 46 points behind Manchester City yes. and yet you say to us that they're going to they're, they're going to be contenders next season. I do not doubt that they'll be contenders next season. On, on the I'll, strength of what? On the strength of the fact that they've got a manager in the door that's capable of making them contenders. I don't think he'll make them winners. I think he'll make them contenders because it's but out... But you know, yeah. you said he was a bridesmaid. Yeah, exactly. So I make him contenders, not winners. There's a difference. He'll be a bridesmaid. He'll be he'll be there. He'll be there. No, bridesmaids are at the wedding, aren't they? He'll be at the wedding. He just won't be the bride. You're going to have to wholesale ship out some of the players that are there. So they'll do that, won't they? There was always going to be a cleaning of the decks. Your contract. You're going to see Mason Mount. No, not those guys. You're going to see Mason Mount. You're going to see Ruben Loftus Cheek. You're going to see players that have been brought through that ultimately are carried no value on their balance sheet, be sold for fifty million quid, and Chelsea are going to make profits to be able to overcome the financial fair play obligations that they'll have for these big deals they've done this year. They'll go again in the transfer market. Probably spend another a couple of hundred million quid Pochettino will come in there knows the landscape knows big players has managed PSG has managed Tottenham managed big players knows what they look like and he'll have the right tone intonation and ability to communicate but, con- but contenders contenders yeah absolutely they'll, contenders they'll be in the top four next year well, I think sometimes you look at these teams and you think how on earth can they turn it round if they're going to look at anybody, you might even look at Arsenal. Because this time last year, if any of us would have said oh, Arsenal were going to be contenders to win the Premier League, you, we'd have all probably said exactly the same as we're saying about Chelsea true, now. True. But I'll tell you what, it, it, it was only their own work on a few games like Southampton at home and West Ham away and one or two other other games like that that probably ruled Arsenal out of yeah. mm-hmm. actually getting their hands on it and how well City had done. But... Chelsea have got a fantastic squad of players, but there's a lot of work to be done this summer in who you get out and if you bring more in. Sure, I've had many conversations with this man in my time in England and he's been nothing other than helpful. He's brilliant. But should Frank Lampard be regretting taking his second Chelsea stint 
uh, is, is his Premier League managerial reputation now damaged beyond repair? Well, two things I'd probably say there. Firstly, I went back in to do a managerial job at Nottingham Forest and lasted seven months, OK? And people say to me, and, and we were anywhere between first and twelfth in the division um, over that seven-month period. And people said to me, hey, do you regret going back into that club now? And I said, 100% no, because I affected some form of change in and around it. I made a lot of people's lives a lot better. Uh, united the team a little bit more. And Frank will be the same. I had a, a connection and a love for the football club. Frank's got the, exactly the same, a connection. Did you manage against you? And Afterwards, no, I didn't. So Frank Lampard's in that space. Yeah, you, you, I, I You're content think... with that outcome. He's not going to be. He wants to manage again, and you've been content I with that. I think he still will. I, I think he'll Premier still League manage. One. No, not he'll, have to, uh, he'll probably, Simon, have to earn a place. He's going to have to go back to the drawing board and earn... He, he might a, have to get promoted. There's a massive argument it. that he didn't earn the right to manage Chelsea in the first place because putting Derby, Derby in the playoffs is an absolute country mile away from managing a machine like Chelsea mm. with a, a level of playing and expectation that he's not managed that at that point. Now, it's a disaster for Frank. An absolutely unmitigated, undeniable disaster. Look at the statistics. You know, they, they are bottom of the league for the eight or nine games that he's been in on every stat. From goals scored to goals conceded to points won, they're sitting at the bottom. And these are, they're not, we're talking about games that they potentially are playing against opposition that because Chelsea aren't at the, at the races. We're talking about a group of teams that Chelsea, even if they're not at the races, should have got points from. So there's nothing for Frank in this. Nothing besides ridicule, parody, and a diminishing of his relationship. He should never have taken this opportunity. It was never a clever move. And who gave him the opportunity? Bowley, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, for, to reunite the fans with a legend. Oh, well, that's worked well, hasn't it? It's worked well for the legend. The club have got nothing from yeah. it. The players have learnt nothing from it. But Frank knew what he was getting into. He was a club. Sat in every boy. game without a recognised striker. <laughs> but we're discussing whether it was a good move for him, whether he knew what was involved with him or not what was involved with him. He took it, and out of that has come no good for Frank. No one gives him a pass for this. No one thinks it's well done. No one thinks there's anything from that. that actually, you're seeing, you, you've are seeing you seen skits they're doing of Frank Lampard sitting in a room while they're phoning every single manager, including his uncle, to say, would you come and take the team? And they're parodying Frank by going... I know. Well, you know you've seen that. That's I've seen what, it, and it's that's not fair. Where, I mean, uh, no, it's not fair, but that's what happens when you put yourself in the way of those sort of decision-making processes. Frank has not come out of this with one iota of benefit. And as so a colleague of Lampard, perhaps? Stuart, I know that... Simon will say it because Simon firmly mm. believes it. But as a colleague of Lampard's, you, you, you find that this morning, to a degree, you've got to protect Lampard in some way. Support Lampard, I should say. Uh, well, listen, I, I've played with him and coached him. so, But I don't feel any obligation to, to support or, or stick up for him in any way, shape or form. I'll just say that at this moment in time, I can agree with what you said because the stats are quite damning from his time in there. Roll the clock back nine games ago, and I I can see his connection with Chelsea. I can see why he's walked through the door. He, he wasn't working at the time, and an opportunity to work with the quality of player that the Chelsea squad have got. Yeah, nine games down the, down the line, however long it's been, it's not been good. There's there's probably been there's been no change at all I have in the him fortune. With a dirty stick. Well, that's fine. There's no game there. You know for him. what I mean? Sure, it's but, hard to see how he can manage in the Premier League again, isn't it? Uh, no, because I think he'll have to earn that. I don't think there'll be a job readily available this but, summer. But he thought he'd earn it by by showing what he can do at Chelsea. Exactly, and that's why he took the job in the first place. He might have to earn it by getting a team promoted from the Championship. Yeah, I think that's probably right. I mean, it's. It's damaged him, I'm afraid. I think it, whatever way you look at it. And, and I feel bad about that because Frank is, is a, a terrific guy uh, and a hard-working man. But the nature of what he went into has mm. also let him down, sure, is my belief. Well, you might turn around and say the club was so fractured yeah. that nobody would have turned He didn't have around. the right tools available to Listen, him, Simon. You are You're being super hard you are, You've got plenty of bloody good tools. There's more, a lot of clubs in that division wouldn't mind some of those tools. Um, the choices you make in life define you. So he made a choice... To go back into Chelsea, he made a choice to go to Everton. Um, he made a choice to leave Derby when he hadn't learned his trade. Some would say, "Well, come on, you get an opportunity to go and manage Chelsea at that time. You've got to take it." But the choices in life define you. So now he reaps the benefit of the disadvantages of the choices made here. Okay, Chelsea, forty-six points behind Manchester City this morning. It's eleven. Jim White and Simon Jordan.
Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.